Good evening, everyone. My name is Leslie, and I'm a recovered alcoholic. Thank you for joining Elm City Speakers' one-hour speaker meeting currently hosted on Zoom. We feel it is important to continue to stay connected to Alcoholics Anonymous and to fellowship with each other. Please feel free to use the chat section on Zoom after the meeting to get each other's contact information so we can all stay connected. We will be hosting a one-hour speaker meeting every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Zoom with the same meeting ID and password you have used for this one. We are fully supporting declining outside contribution and in keeping with the seventh tradition, we will be passing the virtual Venmo basket if you wish to contribute. Your contributions help to pay for this Zoom meeting and allow us to continue hosting great speakers to share their message of hope with you. The Venmo info will be posted in the chat section for the remainder of the meeting. The Venmo handle is at Elm City Speaker Group dash meeting. And for those of you who will join me, let's please say the set aside prayer. <clears throat> Dear God, Please help me set aside everything I think I know about myself, my disease, the big book, and the 12 steps. Everything I think I know about the program, the fellowship, all spiritual terms, and especially about you, God, so I may have an open mind and a new experience. Please help me see the truth. Amen. From the forward to the first edition of Alcoholics Anonymous. We of Alcoholics Anonymous are more than 100 men and women who have recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body. To show other alcoholics precisely how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book and of this group. <clears throat> Our group's message comes out of There is a Solution from the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous. The tremendous fact for every one of us is that we have discovered a common solution. We have a way out on which we can absolutely agree and upon which we can join in brotherly and harmonious action. This is the great news this book carries to those who suffer from alcoholism. Please continue to join us each Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Zoom until we are all able to meet again in person. Tonight, we have a little holiday special shindig. We're having a mini workshop, and our speakers tonight will be going through the AA pages of 60 to 63, and I would like to introduce them now. We have Robbie W. from Wildwood, New Jersey, and Mike L. from Portland, Oregon. So you guys can unmute yourself whenever you're ready. Thank you, Leslie. And hello, Elm City Speaker Group of New Haven, Connecticut. My name's Robbie. I'm a recovered alcoholic. I got a permanent sobriety date. It's October 31st of 1983. I got an amazing home group. It's called the uh, Good Morning Avalon Group at the Jersey Shore. Some of you are aware of it. And I got I'm sorry I'm going to say this, but I got the best sponsor in the whole entire world. And yes, Jack, that includes England, and, and Greg, that includes the UK, whatever. Um, and his name is Ben, and I'm stoked to be here. I can't wait for this thing to start. But before we go any further, let me call on our co-facilitator, my amazingly good friend, Mike L. Say hi, everybody, Mike. Hey, everybody, Mike. Recovered alcoholic from uh, Beaverton, Oregon. Uh, I have a permanent sobriety of the day after Robbie. Ah, the first of November of 1983. And he does never, never, and this is the opportunity to remind me of that. My home group is out to uh, breakfast, although I'm usually out to lunch. Uh, in Portland, Oregon, we meet at 7 a.m. Uh, on Saturday mornings. And I have a sponsor named Greg D, uh, and I sponsor guys that keeps me right in the middle of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, so there you go. Thanks, Robbie. Thank you, Mike. And Mike and I met on this journey, Leslie, on Zoom. We'd have never met without the great pause of 2020. We would have never met. I know a lot of folks are a little bit queasy about the, the Zoom meetings and, 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 and all that, and Mike and I have learned to embrace them, you know, just like we do in recovery, right? We find out our gifts. We find out what God leaves us. We embrace those gifts and we go forward with it. We don't complain. You know what I mean? We don't whine. You know, we say, okay, God, if this is what you're giving us, we're going to take it, right, Mike? And we're going to enjoy it. Mike and I have become very good friends. We talk to each other on the phone. I go to his home group. He goes to my home group. If we were little kids, Mike and I would be besties. You know what I mean, right, Mike? 
And, uh, and, and I really like that about Mike. And, and I, I have a tad bit different energy to Mike. And I think that's why we get along so good. Now, this evening, everybody, Mike and I will be taking everyone on a spiritual journey as we take the third step tonight. Okay, we're going to take it. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to study it. We're not going to break it down. We're going to take it. You know what I mean, Ed P? We're going to take this sucker, man. We're all, and later on, man, get ready. Get your area ready because we're actually going to get on our knees. We're going to invite you, Ian from Philly. We're going to invite you, Paul D from New Haven, to get on your knees as we take the third step together. You too, Rylan from Newmarket, Ontario, and Tracy. You guys get ready. Uh, uh, we're going to have some fun tonight, all right? Um, we're going to go through pages 60 to 63, like Leslie mentioned to you. And guess what? It's 10 paragraphs. That's it. Kingsley T. We're going to do 10 paragraphs tonight. Are you ready, Kingsley? Give me some hand. Give me some love. If you guys are ready for 10 paragraphs out of the big book, the third step. Come on, Chris B. from Reno. I want to see, see some energy from you. This is like the pregame. We get the players together and we're all in a huddle right in the middle of the field, right? And we're telling everybody, we got this. No one's going to stop us, right? No character defects, no shortcomings, right, Mike? We got this and we're going to have a great time. Mike, what is our hope for all attending tonight? What's your call on that? We, I, we would like to convince them that any will life run on self will can hardly be a success. And we're going to do it by bringing God into their lives through this journey tonight. So the third step is, said it with me, we made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Robbie, let's get this third step mini workshop lifted off. All systems go. Are you ready? Come on, alcoholics. Let's get excited about recovery. Ian from Philadelphia, you should be the most excited right now with this rocking theme. Paul D from New Haven, Connecticut. Jamie from New York. Chris, what we're getting ready to do, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get every, we're going to take you on a new experience. And it's called the third step of Alcoholics Anonymous. This is a step that a lot of alcoholics miss, Rylan, and they forget to turn their whole entire will and their whole entire life over to care of God, Tracy. But tonight, if you're in this group, get ready, because we got this, all of us together. And we're not going to stop until we bring God into the room. So, Mike, I really appreciate that. Why don't we go to page 60, all right? And why don't you begin us by reading the first paragraph, being convinced. This book, right, Robbie? Is it this book? This book right yeah, here. It, Read the this book. book. I, this book. And, and everybody, that book. And I hope that your big book has markups in it and stuff written on it. And they told me, Mike, if your big book's falling apart, you probably aren't. After the ABCs, it says, being convinced we were at step three, which is that we decided to turn our will and our life over to, the, over to God as we understood him. Just what do we mean by that? And just what do we do? Robbie, what is the first requirement for those about to embark on this journey? Thanks, Mike. Right. Next paragraph. Thanks. The first requirement is that we be convinced that any life run on self-will can hardly be a success. On that basis, we're almost always in collision with something or somebody, even though our motives are good. Remember, everybody, when we were drinking and we were doing all that stuff, that non-conflict approved stuff. And remember, even when we had good motives, right, Valley, when we went out in the mornings or in the evenings, and I'm only going to have a few, and I'm going to come home early, right, Paulie? I'm going to come home early and I'm going to go to work tomorrow, Chris. I'm really going to go to work tomorrow, you know? And, uh, and this time, Rylan, this time, I'm not going to make a fool of myself. So even when our motives were good, our people says to us, it says most people try to live by self-propulsion. Any hands? Any self-propulsion people out there when you're drinking? 
an in game, right? I see a lot of hands going up. Thank you, right? Each person is like an actor who wants to run the show, Mike, right? Um, uh, is forever trying to arrange the lights, the ballet, the scenery, and the rest of the players in his own way. You ever meet somebody in Alcoholics Anonymous and they're a control freak? And they want to arrange everything in the group. Nope, you ain't doing nothing. I say what you do. And a lot of times, most make, that makes a lot of us feel uncomfortable or violent. And, and the reason is because that's who we used to be, right? When we were out there, that's who we used to be. If every, everything went our way, Kathleen, we'd be just fine, right? <clears throat> if, next page, page 61, if the arrangements would only stay put, right? If only people would do as we wished, <laughs> and that would be great. Everybody, including himself, would be pleased. Life would be wonderful, right? In trying to make these arrangements, our actor may sometimes be quite virtuous but rarely as far as I'm concerned. He may be kind, considerate, patient, generous, even modest and self-sacrificing. On the other hand, and here's most of us just saying, on the other hand, he may be mean, egotistical, selfish, and dishonest. But with as most humans, that we're more likely to have very traits. Before I pass over to you, Mike, I just want to talk about one thing, and that's being mean and egotistical. When I, I, Mike, when I was out there drinking, man, I was mean and egotistical to my family. It was so bad. So Suzanne, my fiance, is in the room, and she knows that today I got this really big basket. My Greg delivered to my office with all these pastries in there. And I mean, it had to be a hundred dollar basket. And it said, love your little sister, Tracy. May you, Susie, Allison, and Lucas, Allison and Lucas are our kids. Enjoy your, your holiday weekend. Uh, Greg, that's the same sister that when my mom and dad and my little sister came home one night from Christmas Eve shopping, I was in the house robbing them. Robbing them, Greg. I already had it, all daddy's, all my dad's beers out back, Mike, in a bag. That was most important, first thing first. And I was taking my, everything else that I found of any value, Ed P, so I could so I could pawn it off. And my mom and dad came in the door, and I was upstairs. We're in Philadelphia, Ian, in a row home. You know what I mean? There's only one way out, and they could tell I was there. And my mom said, "Bob, call the police." And I was as I was running out the back door, Jack, like a weasel that I was. My little sister said, "Please, don't come back." And she said one more thing that I'll never forget. I hope you die. That's the same sister that today sent me a beautiful basket for my family. Thank you, Alcoholics Anonymous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But you know what? What do our big book authors uh, suggest, Mike? Usually happens at this point when we take step three. Oh, some good news. Well, Robbie, what usually happens is the show does doesn't come off very well. In fact, it comes off pretty badly if you're in my case. He begins to think that life doesn't treat him right. Oh yeah, I was always the victim. I was always, why are they treating me right? He decides to assert himself more. He becomes on the next occasion still more demanding or gracious as the case may be. Still, the play does not suit him. Admitting Ever, anybody ever admit you're maybe a little bit at fault? Just a little bit. Somewhat at fault. He is sure that other people are to blame. You know, in this program of Alcoholics Anonymous, I, I don't usually refer to the 12 and 12, but where other people were concerned, we had to drop the word blame from our speech. Here's the big one. Are you ready? From our speech and thought. So from Mike. our speech. Uh, are you saying are you saying we got to be blameless we got to stop blaming people absolutely yeah. wow yeah, okay keep going do. so as i think other more people to blame then i become angry indignant self-pitying what is his basic trouble is he not kind is he not really a self-seeker when trying to be kind anybody ever kind of want something and really be kind and to get what they want, 
Yeah, that was me. Is he not a victim of the delusion that he can wrest satisfaction and happiness out of this world if he only manages well? God, if they just stay put, if they do what I want, especially what I'm thinking that they should do. Is it not evident to all the rest of the players that these are the things he wants and do not his actions make each of them wish to retaliate, snatching all they can get out of the show? And is he, is Mike not, even in his best moments, a producer of confusion rather than harmony? Who do we find it? Does, uh, uh oh. <laughs> I'm lost. So, Robbie, you're okay, Mike. I'll take it. I'll take it from here, ladies and gentlemen. Who watches football? Raise your hand. NFL football, American football. So, I'm going to call it audible, Mike. Everybody, turn to page 17. I don't like the defense. Turn to page 17. I'm going to change the play. Turn to page 17, Greg. And there's a there's a great audible. I'm going to call here, Mike, because Mike just mentioned about that we're not in harmony with others. That we're that we're we, we produce confusion rather than harmony. So let's see what Bill says about the harmony. I'm going to page 17. It says the tremendous fact for every one of us is that we've discovered a common solution, Rylan. We found a way out. And oh, by the way, people, that we can absolutely agree upon. I'm sorry, but it's not my job to come here to AA or my group or your group and to tell you what you're doing wrong even to tell my group what they're doing wrong. It's my, it's my, if I'm going to do anything, I better give to the group, right, Mike? I want to add to the group. I'm going to say, how can I help, right? And then it's, here it comes, Mike. We have a way out on which we can absolutely agree and we can join in brotherly and harmonious oh, yes. action. So, Mike, I love that. I want to be harmonious with you people. I want to get into action straight up. But where Mike was taking me, he was taking me to page 61. And it says our actor is self-centered, right? We all get that egocentric. We all get that ego easing God out, right? I don't know about y'all, but I had 12 years of Catholic schooling. I got raised by nuns and by priests, okay? And, and, and yet, so I know the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? I get the spiritual principles, Kathleen, okay? But the reality of it was because of my ego, because of the alcohol, I blurred it all out, right? He's like the retired businessman who lulls in the Florida sunshine, Mike, in the winter, complaining of the sad state of the nation, the minister who sighs over the sins of the 20th century. I don't know about y'all, but when I hear a minister or a pastor and all he's doing is telling us, you know, the world's going to hell in a handbasket, I'm out. I'm out, Chris A. You know, I, I need hope. You know, hope stands for hang on, pain ends. I need him to say, hey, even though, you know, we're in the world, we don't have to be of the world. You know, in Alcoholics Anonymous, we can have a new attitude, right? It says that the, uh, Mike brought up, I'll bring it up. There's nothing wrong with the 12 and 12. The 12 and 12 is comfort approved literature. Oh, by the way, my hero named Bill Wilson wrote it. And, and in the 12 and 12, at the end of the first step, it says that, who cares when we complete defeat? Who cares? It's like a brief time and energy for the suffering alcohol. Oh, then it says, no, right, Mike? Not the average alcoholic, oh. self-centered in the extreme. Right, Mike? They don't care for this prospect. But those of us that do, we care about it because our lives depend on it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're an average alcohol on December 23rd of 2020, Right? At this at this really cool workshop in New Haven, Connecticut, I'll tell you what Dr. Bob would say to you. We feel sorry for you. Don't be an average alcoholic. Be an alcoholic that says, I'm done. Right, Greg? I'm all in. I'm done. I'm done fighting the fight, Rylan. What do you want me to do? Rylan's a good example. He's a newcomer in one of my home groups. And he says, I'll do it. I'll show up. You know, I'll get involved. And, if, and, and, and you know what? None of us know what we're doing here, but we all encourage each other and we all support each other. As I finish that paragraph on 61, Mike, it says, it says, um, politicians and reformers who are sure all would be utopia, let's go to 62, if the rest of the world would only behave. See, once again, our big book founders are reminding us 
we're not focused on anybody else but ourselves, right? The, out <laughs> the outlaw safe cracker, I know a little bit about that, right? Who thinks society has wronged him and the alcoholic who has lost all and is locked up. Whatever our protestations are not most of us concerned with ourselves and our resentments and our self pity. I get sick physically when I'm in an AA convention or conference and there's a speaker up there and he says, and the speaker says, well, I'm not much, but I'm all I think about. <laughs> I don't think that's funny, Leslie. I really don't. I think it's horrific that we have a person that's given a chance to be at a podium of Alcoholics Anonymous and they're going to make a joke that, 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 that that's all they think about is themselves. My job, selfishness stands for caring only for oneself. Mike, does that sound like a definition of Alcoholics Anonymous? It does. I don't think. Yeah. Well, why don't you read the next Self paragraph where it says selfishness and self-centers and let us know what's going on. Selfishness, self-centeredness, Robbie. That, we think, is the root of our troubles. And what's the root? We all know the root is in a plant. We know in the, in the tree. And out here in Oregon, we got some darn big trees. And those roots, they are way, way down. There's no way I can pull them out without some real, real heavy lifting, some real extraction work. You know, like we, when we come to Alcoholics Anonymous, we need some work. We need some heavy, heavy work done on us for us to change. Because we're driven. We're driven by a hundred forms of self-delusion, of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity. Anybody here sit down and write up a hundred forms? Yeah, I have. Step on the toes of our fellows and they retaliate. Anybody ever step on the toes of people and they get mad at us? Why would they be mad? Just doing, you know, some self-seeking. And sometimes, most of the time, they hurt us, seemingly without provocation. But we invariably find that at some time in the past, an hour ago, a day ago, years ago, we have made decisions based on self, which later placed us in a position to be hurt. I usually hurt, you know, myself by taking those actions. And then I wonder who caused these troubles for me. Hey, Robbie, who causes these troubles for us? So, Mike. That's a great softball. Thank you. High arc softball there. <laughs> Before I share that paragraph with everybody, I want to go back to the top of the page and see at the top of the page where it says, if only the rest of the world would behave, right? The outlaw safe cracker who thinks society has wronged him, right? And the alcoholic who has lost all and is locked up. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you've been locked up. I'm just not going to do that. It's not, it's not a requirement here. Mike and I are going to talk about some requirements as we move on here. Hey, there's Tracy P. from Mexico. All right, Trace, good to see you, kid. But listen to this. The reality of it is I've been locked up. I, 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 Paul E.D. reminded everybody before the meeting, I've been locked up in a federal prison. I was in a federal prison because, you know, I took a, a withdrawal from a bank, Jack, without a withdrawal slip, right? And, and I am telling you, I was 18 and a half years old, and I had, the world was an oyster for me. My mom and dad were sending me to a university. Uh, uh, I had friends galore. I, 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 had a, I had a beautiful girlfriend that was a cheerleader uh, from the high school, Ryland, you know? And all of a sudden, at 18 and a half years old, it makes sense to me to take money that doesn't belong to me so I can drink more, Mike, so I could drink more. And I end up getting locked up. And for the next five years, I'm in and out of institutions, in and out of institutions, in and out of living on the streets, right, Mike? In and out of uh, sleeping in abandoned cars. Today, today, God has given me a, a position within an automobile dealership. You know, and I'll never forget when I got that job, Kathleen, the owner looked at me and he says, uh, ha have you ever sold anything? And Jack, I almost fell off my chair. I sold contents of homes. I mean, the people didn't know it. I was pretty good at what I did. I was, I fenced a lot of stuff. I knew how to do that, right, Mike? And I, and I stuttered. And know what I said, Kathleen? No, 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 sir. But here's what happened, Mike. AA kicked in. 
you know, this program that we're sitting in tonight, it's embodied by these 12 uh, uh, spiritual principles, really 36, the step tradition, the concept. Well, Jamie, what happened was this owner kept talking to me and he said, I wasn't getting checked on the boxes that he was looking for. Like, you know, like experience, college degree, what, but he said he kept talking to me, Jamie, because there was something about me. He couldn't put my finger on it, his finger on it. You know what it was, ladies and gentlemen? I was a member of AA in good standing for five full years. And my pro the program of alcohol, no, it's not my program, excuse me. Thank you, program yes, alcohol, thank you. Thank you, Mike. You, you know, you and I don't like <laughs> The program of AA came out with this owner and Kathleen, he sat across from me and he said to me, I have no idea where I'm getting ready to do this, but follow me. And he led me back to an office. Uh, it's not my same office now. I got a little bit nicer office now, but that was 32 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, in, in this workshop, these steps are not a joke. Mike and I are only going through step three tonight for, for, for an hour, okay? But if we don't take them, you know, we may not overcome drinking. You know, don't don't be fooled by somebody that raises their hand, like Greg B, and they say, just don't drink, go to meetings. If your butt falls off, well, well, by golly, put that sucker in a wheelbarrow and get your butt to me. Hey, take the cotton out of your ears, put it in your mouth. <laughs> you can have what I have in 30 years. No, thank you, Dick. I'll pass. You know, I don't want what you got. I want sobriety. I want freedom from alcohol. I want freedom from self. And ladies and gentlemen, if we take the steps, man, get ready. Mike said early on, are you ready to get lifted off? And I played that Rocky song for a reason. If you ever been to a football game and they play that song and all the fans are up and we're patting each other and we're excited and we're, and, and, and all of a sudden, you know, and that's what happens here in AA, enthusiasm, excitement, are we going to show them that sobriety is enough, Robbie? You said I want sobriety, and that's true. But is sobriety all we're to expect? I don't think so, Mike. Okay, well, we've got a few more paragraphs, and we got some things for them that they don't. So here we know go. Hidden in this step, right? They, it okay. says, yep. Mike. You know what it says? It says our troubles we think are basically of our own making. <laughs> How about that? Not someone else's. They arise out of ourselves. Or, uh, Not somebody else's. <laughs> and we're okay. on 62, everybody. Stay with us. Okay. And the alcoholic is an extreme example of self will run riot. Although he usually doesn't think so, right, Mike? Of everything, the alcoholic must be rid of selfishness. We must, or it kills us. AA is a selfish program. <laughs> Yeah, if we're sober here at this point, how can selfishness kill me? I thought drinking will kill me. Isn't, yeah. isn't selfishness well, right a now? Pain? It's saying it's saying that the alcohol, the bottle, is just a symbol, Mike. At some point, we got to get down to the causes and conditions, right? The roots. We got to figure out what, the what's roots. the root. What's the root? Yeah, and we're not talking about we're not talking about root series with Kunta Kinte. So we're talking about roots, like getting to the root of the problem. There's Mick. Oh, you Mick from Scotland. Good to see you, mate. All right. So guess what, Mike? I got great news. It says here, we must get rid of selfishness or it kills us. And you let's read the next sentence together. You ready? God, God makes, makes that makes possible. That possible. Ladies and gentlemen, not your sponsor. No offense, I'm sure you have an amazing sponsor. You heard, I believe I do. Not your home meetings. group. What about meetings? Not your meetings. Did you see what happened, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to give you a case in point. If, if you were, if you, so my other book that I read, it says, stand watch. Stand on watch, Paul E.D., right? Always be ready. And if you watch what happened last, uh, in March of this year, when the pandemic hit, I don't know if anybody's ever seen an electric football game. You know that electric football game used to be out, and all and you turn it on, and all the players, and they all go into each other. And what happened, Kingsley? Right when 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 the pandemic hit, 
the alcoholics that were dependent on meetings. Do you hear me? And I'm just stating the fact. This is not judging. I'm just showing what I saw. If I was an attorney right now, I'd be telling the judge, here's what I saw. I saw alcoholics like that electric football, you know, going into a wall. I can't, I can't do this. I need my knees. I need hugs. And, and the reality of it is, no, you don't. And I found out, Bill Neitzel, you know what I found out? I found out all along that what I really needed was God. And through the grace of God, I had a God. And I knew right away, Valley, that my job was to get on here at Zoom. And Suzanne's on the call with me, my fiance. We got on here and we started a group and it's still flourishing today. And listen, I hope we get back to face-to-face meetings. We all do. I, I, I was at a convention every weekend of the year and I loved it. And I loved hugs. There's no one in this group that loves hugs more than me. But God said, slow down. God said, slow down down people we just had to do that let's go to 164 mike i'm going to call another audible get ready i'm not a quarterback that likes to run the play the coach says go to 164 because we're going to we're going to tell him leslie there's an amazing truth on 164 mike i want you to read it for us go to 164 i know you're dying to read this mike because it says in the next to the last paragraph see to it that tell them what it says mike tell them the good news see to it that your relationship is right and with him capital h and great events will come to pass for you and countless others this what kind of events mike hey great, mike what kind of events great great i like that keep reading this is a great fact for us Abandon yourself to God as you understand God. Admit your faults to him and to your fellows. Clear away the wreckage of your past. Give freely what you find and join us. Even on Zoom, we shall be with you in the fellowship of the spirit. And you will surely meet some of us as you trudge the road of happy destiny. May God bless you and keep you. Until then. Thank you, Mike. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, it says right there, there's the answer. Like if I was a professor, I'm telling you, classmates, uh, uh, college classmates, here's, this is going to be on the test. See to it that your relationship with him is right. That's what it says. It doesn't say see to it that you make four meetings a day. See to it that you get in with the group gurus. I don't like group gurus. God. God is my higher power, Kingsley, not the loudest person in the group, not the person that, you know, whatever, but even, listen, I got AA heroes. You know, I got the Sandy Beaches and the, and the Clancy Emerslins and the Johnny Harrises and the Pastor what Jacks that I common? love. What do they all have in common, Robbie? They had a God, Mike. I, I fell in love with their God. So they, I they, think that's what they, Mike and I, Right, go ahead, Mike. You have something to say? They relied on God. They knew their power came from one source. That's that's why there are heroes. That's why those people have so much, you know, that uh, that I want. You know, I'll follow yep. them to the end of the earth because guys like Mark Houston, Chris Raymer, you know, Don Pritz. These guys had a God, and the guys you mentioned. I mean, there are AA heroes because they followed this. They did with this you know, said, and then they, they had spiritual experiences that, you know, they transmitted to us, you know, and we better transmit it to, to others through saying what this did for us. You know, even if we were in jail, yeah. you can have lives that are worth living today. You're a great example of a brother. I love that, Mike. I, I remember when I was sitting at the joint, right? And here they come. Two AA members, right, Kathleen? They got the big books. They got a lot of teeth. And you know what they're all doing, Kingsley? They were smiling. And I didn't like that. That was I didn't like that, Craig. You know, stop smiling. I'm in prison. You get to go home to your wife or your pretty girlfriend. You know, I'm stuck here in prison. But they were smiling, Mike, because they found the solution. Isn't that amazing? 
crazy. It sounds like our history too. The, the number three was not smile was was uh, nothing to smile about, boys. That I'm tied down tight. Yeah. <laughs> and I want to talk about AA number three for a second as we're going through step three, because AA number three list them was Bill Dotson. He was an attorney. Now think about this for a second. Hi, Manuel. Hi, Autumn. There's Autumn back. I love Autumn. And and, and here's Bill D. He's laying in bed. Oh, by the way, he's an attorney. But once again, he's going through the DTs. And here comes a New York stockbroker, right? <laughs> and, 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 and a proctologist, a fellow that works on trainees, okay? And they come in dressed like me and Mike. They're all dressed all pretty, Leslie, all in suits. And they sit next to him. And they start talking about, oh, by the way, I want to say something. Let's not get too much on a high horse here. They weren't talking about the big book. It hadn't been created yet. Oh, by the way, they weren't talking about the steps. They hadn't yet been written either. You know what they were talking about? Or drinking. Drinking. And oh, by the way, that's what Bill talked about. That's what Bill talked about when he got Dr. Bob to buy in us at the Henry Henrietta Cyberlink Estate. But let's get back to Bill D, the, a, the AA member on the bed, the member on the bed. That's what happened. They talked about their drinking with him, Greg, like we do sometimes in here. And he and he started saying, wow, yeah, that was me too. He looked past the suits. That was me too. Bill and Bob left. His wife came up to the room, Mike. Her name was Henrietta. And and he said, honey, I, I, I just talked to these two men and they said I, they, uh, they weren't drinking and that they could help me with not drinking. And as he was telling her this, Bill and Bob came walking down the hallway again. And as soon as Bill Dotson's, and this is this is verbatim, as soon as Bill Dotson seen him, he said, honey, that's them. That's the men I was talking about. And she immediately left the room and said, God bless you, men. Thank you. And Bill and Bob sat down on his bed again. Mike. It still gives me like palpitations when I hear that. And that's our job today, to carry this message. So I brought this frog on for a reason. I hope you all got frogs in your homes. I hope you all got frogs to look at. Well, why, Rob? Frog stands for fully relying on God. Okay. And I hope you fully rely on God. Again, not watch the false dependencies. I'm telling you, I will I will fight you to the T. There's not a person in this room that loves AA meetings more than me. I love meetings, Greg. I love them, love them, love them. Can't wait to be in them. I don't always like being in a suit and being on the podium. But they are not what I rely on, okay? I love my sponsor. He is not who I'm supposed to rely on. I love the big book. Mm -mm. Still, it's great to know what's in it. But I hope I'm carrying these principles out into my life. I hope when my daughter comes tomorrow that I'm able to be a good father for Christmas, right? I hope when my fiancé comes on Saturday that I'm a good fiancé, right? I hope I'm fully relying on a God of my understanding. Mike, hey, let's Robbie, back to the... Oh, yeah, let, me throw, got, let me throw you an audible. I'm going to throw you an audible. You okay, just I'm ready. Something. Pa page 19. I'm in the huddle, Mike. What do you got? I got page 19 and we're talking about, let's get rid of our drinking. Okay. We're not, we're drinking. We're done with drinking, but it says a much more important demonstration of our principles lies in before us in our respective homes, occupations and affairs. Just what you're talking about. I need to practice these principles and do this. That's where these, that's where the program is. That's where recovery begins in demonstrating these principles to those people outside of meetings, the people outside, I can love, it's easy to love you all, talk the same language from the heart, but those people out there, it's hard to communicate sometimes, but I can still love them and communicate love and demonstrate these principles. So thanks for the reminder, Robbie. Um, I I happen to know your wife, Gretchen, and, and I do know you work this program with Gretchen, that you bring this program into, you know, you're, you're married with Gretchen, correct? She, 
She told me I was helpful. Now, now that's a miracle. She's told me that two times in the last week and a half. She's sick. She's had some mental illnesses yep. over this COVID thing. And I've been helpful, which that's not me. Mike Leopold mm. isn't helpful. Mike Leopold thinks is on page 61, 62, and 63. If there's no God, if there's no power of God. And so the power of God is working in my life as we speak. And I am grateful. I love Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm grateful for Alcoholics Anonymous because I'm helpful and can be helpful to, to others. Um, yes, thanks for reminding me of that. And I love that. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, think about it for a second. What we do between the serenity prayer at the beginning of the meeting and the Our Father at the end of the meeting isn't as important as what we do from the uh, the end of the Our Father to the next uh, 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 surrounding prayer. Yeah. What are we doing once we leave a meeting, right, Mike? Yeah. How are yeah. we acting? Are we taking these principles into all our affairs? You know? And when we can do that, now we know, Greg B, that we're starting to reach that fourth dimension, that fourth dimension of existence that Bill talked about. And oh, by the way, the fourth dimension of existence is right here and right now, December 23rd now. at 7.40 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2020. Are you in the right here? Are you in the right now? Oh, I know we might have a few more presents to get. My daughter and I are wrapping presents tomorrow. She wants daddy to help her wrap presents. And I said, I can't wait. She said, dad, you're so weird. I said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get back to the book, Mike. Let's okay. get back to 62 where I was, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. It says, it says, remember we said God makes this possible, and I'm going to continue. Right. And there often seems yep. no way of entirely getting rid of self without his aid. Oh, by the way, his is capitalized. A little secret for those of you that aren't, obviously, anytime a word is capitalized in the big book, it's our higher power. Let's always remember that. So we got it. We can't go along without his aid, not your sponsor, not the group, but his aid. Oh, we need sponsors. We need home groups. I love sponsors. I love my home groups. But when it comes down to it and we take our final breath and you get a chance to meet your maker, think about that and think about who that will be. I do it all the time. Hi, Christina from New York. Great to see you, kid. Thanks for popping in. We're on page 62, as you know, doing the third step. Suzanne is up there. You guys are probably chatting if I know you too. All right, so here we go. Many of us had moral and philosophical convictions galore, but we could not live up to them, even though we would have liked to. Neither could we reduce our self-centeredness much by wishing or trying on our own power. And here it goes. We had to have god's help mike we had to have god's help and i need god's help it, it's not a weakness to admit that you can't do it alone it's a strength and that is just so vitally important all right so then let's see what the next sentence is you know what mike just let us know what's the how and why of it tell us what's going on with that Bobby. this is the how and why of it first of all that's number one we had to quit playing God. It didn't work. That's why I'm here. Next, we decided that hereafter in this drama of life, when I woke up this morning, life began. When I go to sleep, it will, it'll wait till the next morning, tomorrow morning, God willing. But in this drama of life, God is going to be my director, our director. He is the principal we are his agents. He is the father. We are the children. Okay, Who's stop for a second. Oh. <laughs> okay. I gotta stop you just for one second, Mike, because we do. just read something amazing. I'll get right back to you. Guess what we are? We are God agents. It's not exciting. I just wanted everybody to know we are God agents, Tracy. I mean, like, good news. You got a new title. If you're here and you didn't know it, you're a God agent. I don't know about you. I always wanted to be like an FBI agent. I can't because I got I stole money from a bank. So I got a federal record. That's a, that's another. 
But but guess what? The good news is, and my sponsor pointed this out to me 30 years ago, I could be a God agent. And if I could be a God agent, I'm happy. Back to you, Mike. Most ideas are simple. And this concept was the keystone of the new and triumphant arch through which we passed to freedom. Anybody ever been to St. Louis? You know where I'm going with that one, right? There's that big arch. There's a keystone that held it together. I wanna to get on the other side. I, when I get on the other side of that arch, this next paragraph that Robbie's gonna read, you know, and tells us what happens when we take such a position on the other side of the arch, he's gonna give us some real good stuff. Robbie, what does happen when we take the position? Thanks, Michael. Now, I give everybody permission. When somebody asks you next time to read the promises in the big book, don't go to 83, mess with them a little bit. Go to page 63 and read this paragraph. Now, they'll stop you. You know what I mean? They'll stop you, Mick. Hey, excuse me, wrong page. Hey, excuse me, wrong page. <laughs> but these are promises, ladies and gentlemen. These are the third step promises. Mike. When I read a promise, let the group know. So everybody turn to page 63, get your highlighters out, get your pens out. Somebody write in their third step promises. And here we go. Mike, remember, help me out. When we sit, when we sincerely hook such a position. It. Now remember, the position we're taking is that we're trusting on God and not ourselves. We're going on God propulsion and not self propulsion anymore. We're saying, okay, God, please help me, right? When we sincerely hook such a position, all sorts of remarkable things follow promise we had a new employer promise being all powerful he provided what we needed promise now here's a warning get ready for the warning if we kept close to him and performed his work well so ladies and gentlemen listen it's just like anything else kingsley I'm going to get that ball in the end zone eventually, right? but I got to do some work to get there. I might have to run around, you know, follow my tackle around end and get as many yards as I can, you know, before I could throw it to my tight end in, in, in the end zone. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, listen to the warning. Okay. Why ain't this working for me? I got 42 days and I'm still not happy like Bobby, you know, and, and here's the reality. Don't stop. You know, keep close to him and perform your work well. What does that look like? Staying close to him, Jack, means doing what you're doing, brother. I see you at every meeting I go to, Jack. I love you, brother. You're doing so good. Right, Tracy P? Stay close to us. Stay close to us, and you're staying close to him. Because whether you, God is right in us, right? And perform his work well. Well, Rob, Mike, what does that mean? How do we perform his work well? What do you mean? I'm not a preacher. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a nun. How do I perform his work well? Mike, how do you perform his work well on a day-to-day -day basis? I establish on such a footing and I become less and less interested in myself. My that's a, that's, a, that's a promise. That's, those are promises. Those are things that I do. On a, yeah, I become, I'm not interested in myself. I have to be on a footing of God, of a new employer. I love that. Like we just had. I got a new employer. So, so Mike, it says our little plans and designs go away. More and more, we become interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. Promise. Thank you. As we felt new power flow in. Promise. So, ladies and gentlemen, did you hear that? You're going to actually, listen, I got good news. You're going to act, I got good news. I, I'm reporting something. I got good news. You're going to feel power flow. Raise your hand if you felt power flow in. If you're not all just taking the steps and you felt that power flow in. If you had, look around the room, look at everybody raising their hand. We got 43 people. Two don't have their hand up. I think they're in Al Anon. That's okay. Keep those hands. Just look at that, man. We're doing great. So you get to feel the power flow in, right? Let's see what it says next. But it gets better. We're not done yet. It says, as we enjoyed. Peace of mind. Promise. Peace of mind. Raise your hand if you're okay, you're okay with peace of mind. Does anybody like peace? No, no, Rob. I want chaos. 
I want to be in a sheriff's van locked with another prisoner. And I want to sit in front of a judge. And I want to wait for him to give me some time again. And oh, by the way, I want to then go to a rehab. And I don't, I want, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to be able to put on any makeup if I'm a woman or if I'm a guy, I can't use my telephone, right? I know you don't want that anymore, but that's what you get when you don't do the work, right? So Mike, then it says, as we discovered, we could face life successfully. Promise. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? We could face life successfully. I went to a big book weekend. Sorry, Mike, one second. I went to a big book weekend in, in Solomon's Island, Maryland. Right? I was there with my sponsor and we were doing what we call a big book boot camp. Back when we get out of this COVID-19, me and Mikey are going to be doing big book boot camps. You don't know it yet, but he is. And me and my sponsor, <laughs> we're doing a big boot camp. And I, and this girl, Suzanne L, met me, me and her sat next to each other at, 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 a, at a marathon meeting on Friday, on Saturday night at nine o'clock. And, and, and she said that, you know, I was one that was aggressive and talked about how beautiful she was. But oh, I remember Mick is that from that moment to this moment, I fell in love with her, man. And I just, I just gave her a ring and I stayed close to God and God put me next to a woman that was just like me, single, a believer, a person that loves AA, a person that sponsors people, like Kathleen, a person that cares about her family and cares about others. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an event you don't want to miss. As we become conscious of his presence, Mike, promise. Right? We become, <laughs> promise, that's a promise. <laughs> stay with me. You know, you're, I'm a quarterback that moves around. Keep your, I always tell my wide receivers, stay alert. Hey, Lord. <laughs> we began, it keeps going, Mike. It says, we began to lose our fear of today, tomorrow, or the hereafter. Promise. And last, I don't have no fear. We were re, we were, no fear. That's crazy. No fear. Is it in there, Mike? It's, well, we lost our yeah. fear of today, tomorrow, or thereafter. What, what, yeah. last, what is, so is left if, if today, tomorrow, or hereafter? That's a Thank promise, you. Mike, isn't it? Well, yeah. 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 And then it says, we were reborn. And I'll tell you what, that's the big deal. We get reborn right here in Alcoholics Anonymous. All right. So, Mike, um, I believe our workshop members are now ready to take this third step with us. What do you think, brother? I think they're ready. I think you're okay. ready. So. Move your chair out a little bit. I mean, we're going to take that okay. third step. That's what we're here for. Okay. If we take this third step, okay. we're going to make a decision. We're going to do it right here. Move down. Get on your knees. Get on your knees. We were now at step three. Many of us said, all of us here at this workshop said to our maker, as we understood him, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties, that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. Okay, rest those knees, get up in the chair, and think, Ugh. think well, people. Think well before taking this step. Were we ready and were we making sure we were ready that we could abandon ourselves as we go forth from here? Abandon ourselves utterly to him as we go forth from this workshop. Robbie, who, who are we going to take this step with? So before I answer that question, Mike, because obviously that's going to be our last paragraph, I just want to remind everybody one thing when we say that. Th first of all, thank you. I look, I took the chance to look around the room. I saw, I saw almost all of us that had their videos on, on their knees, including Leslie. Thank you, Leslie. And I saw you all getting on your knees and trying something new. I know when we do that, we're our, raise your hand if you've done this step with a sponsor or you are a sponsor and you've done it with a sponsee. 
And I'll never forget, thank you, Greg, and thank you, Mick, and Tracy, and Autumn, and, and Tracy, there's Tracy 1 and Tracy 2, and, and, and Manuel, what's up, Manuel, and Jamie, of course, Jamie and Bally. Yes, and Jamie, are you kidding? I did this. Yes, and, and Mike, I remember when I did this third step on my knees with another man, a, a fellow I call my sponsor, I got up and something happened. I almost felt like I joined AA. You know, if you're in the mob, Cosa Nostra, you know, you join by, by knocking somebody off. Yeah, you hit somebody. I'm from Jersey, whatever. Right? You know, so, you know what I mean, Jack? You make a hit, and all of a sudden, you became a made member. You know, you're in this thing of ours, you know? Before, you're just a friend of mine. But now, when you do that, you're a friend of ours. Well, listen, I believe with all my heart and soul, when you take step three, that you become a full-fledged member. You become a God agent. And there ain't no stopping us now. I love that song. You know, when I do retreats, uh, I do that. Ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. And I get 125 women all dancing. It's crazy. And I, and I sometimes I just sit back and I just start crying. And I get wait, so wait, I excited. I got a song. Don't stop me now. I'm having just a good time. I'm having a ball. Don't stop me now. Thank you. Freddie Mercury, rest in peace, brother. Don't stop me now. I love Bobby. it, Mike. That's awesome. You got Thank belly you, dancing. So here's what I want to say about that third step. Remember it says in there, take away our difficulties. Not so that we can look like Mr. or Miss AA. Okay? Not so we can say to people, hey, look at me. Mm -mm. We say, take away our difficulties, right, Nick? So that victory over them may bear witness to those that we can help. Our goal always, Jack, once we get this program, is that we can help others with it. Last paragraph, page 63. We got three minutes. We found it very desirable to take the spiritual step with an understanding person, Leslie, such as our wife, our best friend, or spiritual advisor. But it's better to meet God alone than with one who might misunderstand. The wording was, of course, quite optional, so long as we expressed the idea, voicing it without reservation. This was only a beginning. Only beginning, ladies and gentlemen. When we take this third step, it's only beginning, but it's a big one. So if honestly and humbly made, an effect, sometimes a very great one, was felt at once. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to say one last thing before we close. Before I turn it back to Mike. What's coming in my heart right now to share about? And I just love this little quick story. <clears throat> know it. If you've heard it before, it's great. And if you haven't, just give me two seconds. And it's kind of like when we get into AA, right, Mike? We're on the front at the end of the bike, right? And we're driving that sucker. We're having a good time, Chris. A. We're going through mountains and valleys and we're learning the steps and we're getting a new sponsor. Right, Suzanne L. We're getting new relationships. Uh, sometimes it's a little rocky when we do that, right? We're getting new jobs and oh, we're getting yelled at by bosses, but we're not drinking and we're on the front of his bike, right? And all of a sudden we look back and there's God on the back. And we're like, hey, God, what's up, bro? Keep pedaling, bro. You know, thanks a lot for all you do. And then one day, Jack, we look up, Mike. And we're on the back. And Kathleen, our, our arms are out like this. And there's this fellow or this woman in front of us with long flowing hair. And we don't know what we're doing, but we're holding on. And the ride seems a lot more comfortable, Chris, A. Eh? You know what I mean, Manuel? All of a sudden, the ride seems a lot nicer. And when we look a little bit closer, and somebody finally tr reminds us, like, man, I'm so grateful that you joined us. I'm so grateful you have a God in your life. And we look a little closer and we realize on the front of that hand of bike all of a sudden, because we're on the back, Tracy P. On the front is our, is our higher power. And our higher power, and I wish you'd get to this moment, turns around, looks at us, and softly and lovingly, full of grace, says, pedal, my child. Just pedal. That's our job. Mike, do you have any parting thoughts? Yeah, Robbie, I really hope and pray that I fulfilled my real purpose today is to be of use 
not just to you all, but to God. And that's my purpose in life, and that's my job today. So I hope, hope and pray that in some way I was useful. If I may, I think it's Leslie who was the leader, but if I, if I may ask for Bill N., who has 11 years today, good friend of mine, blessed to have met him on Zoom. I could ask him to lead us in the Lord's Prayer as we close the meeting. All right, everybody, how about a moment of silence for the sick and suffering both in and out of the room, and we will close with the Lord's Prayer. Whose Father? Our, Our Father. Father. Lord, in heaven. Lord in heaven. Hallowed, Hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. come. Thy, will, thy be will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, 